because I'm a dumbass, I forgot my sweet little pillow back here. I got a skinny vessel. I'm a very skinny vessel. I need padding for this. But you know what? It doesn't matter because today is a very... Me and my notifications, Mr. Donovan, please don't strangle me through the Skype. Uh, today, we are a jam-packed. We have six interviews on a fine Saturday. And starting off at 10 a.m., boys and girls, look at who we got. This is starting to pop with Don Kincaid and my very special guest, Sean Donovan. Holy cow. Thank you for spending the time with us, sir. Hey, thank you very much. I'm uh, honored to be your first guy this morning. I'll probably be the best guy you'll see all day long. Hey, uh, I won't disagree with you. Again, I'm only about 35 pounds, as Mr. SOG says. So I'm not one to argue the bigger guys. So I'll go with you on that one. There you go. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us uh, on the Sunday set. See? That's, that's what kind of day this is going to be. It's that's really a, Saturday and I said Sunday, man. Uh, so I love me some wrestling. I'm a fan. I live in Connecticut. I know we're a distance away. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's start right there with, are you, you're in the, the New York area, correct? Correct, yes. The city, the state, because there's a couple different areas over there. <laughs> uh, I'm within the New York region. I actually, I'm, I'm about uh, 40 minutes outside of New York City. Okay, uh, so you get the best of both worlds in New York uh, for wrestling, if you will. There's a lot of wrestling in New York. Oh yes, oh yeah. New York, New Jersey has always been the uh, it's always been the hotbed for for pro wrestling, going back all the way into the seventies. Wow. See, I was born 1970. Saw my first match live 1978 with my pop. Uh, great times. Got me really sucked into wrestling, and I've been here ever since. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm assuming you're an old school guy, if you will. That Matt Classic stuff. Oh, I yeah. love it. The, the AWA, the WCCW, mm -hmm. the NWA, you know, and then it turns over basically to a WCW over time and all of that good stuff. I love the old school stuff. That's Why don't you I talk to Yeah. No, that's that's what I was raised on. I, I uh, my earliest memories of of watching it was directly through my grandfather. He, uh, you know, he was an immigrant that, that came over here to make a better life for his family from Italy. And like anyone in, in the seventies and, you know, when it comes to, you know, pro wrestling and sports, Bruno San Martino in the New York market was the God. Um, and through watching that with him, uh, I was able to develop a love for it unlike anything else. And it just, it captivated me. Uh, I think the first live event I think I went to was in 1986. Um, you know, uh, again, growing up in the New York area, you know, the WWF, if you want to call it, was at Madison Square Garden on a monthly basis. They were over in mm -hmm. New Jersey uh, at the Meadowlands on a monthly basis with live events. So, you know, I got my taste of it. And, and you know, humbling as it is, you know, my parents did everything they could to make a good life for my family and always wanted to give, you know, give better. And they knew how much I loved it and uh, always did the best they could when they could. And when they had the finances to, you know, be able to take me to those shows. Because it's a big deal. I mean, I know the money is way different, you know, uh, 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 worth wise back then it was a lot different than it is now. And I get that. But when you take the fam, if you will, to a wrestling event, it gets up there in price, you know? So even oh. back then when you weren't making a, a whole lot and right. it didn't kind of cost a whole lot in comparison, but mm -hmm. it still cost a bunch to take that, the, the whole family out to a, a big event like that, you know? I agree. And even when you look at today's standards of how our economy differs, you know, you look at fans wanting to take just their, you know, families take their two kids, for example, to a WrestleMania. You're looking at spending... You know, even on on the inexpensive seats, you're you're talking in the thousand dollar range just for a couple of tickets. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, you talk, you know, about how the economy was, you know, 30, 40 years ago. It, it all kind of equates the same. But, uh, you know, pro wrestling on that scale from, you know, learning my history wasn't as expensive of a uh, sporting event, as you want to call it, as it would be for, you know, a football or a basketball game. It was still kind of on the low end, but. Again, you you look at, at economy wise. You know, back then there was uh, 
there was a middle class. <laughs> I don't think there's really much of a middle class anymore. I think you're either poor or you're rich. So, um, but uh, yeah, that that was my that was my love, uh, you know, growing up. And like I said, my my parents did everything they could to, you know, help fulfill the things that I I enjoyed doing to spend that quality time with me. Uh, actually, nice. I remember going on vacation one time. This is probably 1992 or three, California. Uh, and WWF at the time used to do television tapings uh, in Long Beach. Uh, I don't remember the name of the arena, uh, but they would tape about four or five weeks worth of television in one night. And, uh, you know, my parents surprised me with that. And uh, they thought it was going to be like a two hour event. Uh, they had no idea they were going to be sitting there for about five hours. I think, you know, my my. Fam, you know, my parents weren't really wrestling fans, but they knew how much I love it. Um, they did the best they could to stay awake for five hours, but I think at times that was <laughs> over, and I think my father was starting to feel it. Uh, I think my mother was in a different world, but uh, you know, I was all in for those for those five hours. I could not, I could not get enough. So, uh, like I said, man, I have I have nothing but uh, you know respect and love for uh, my parents because they they helped fuel my dream. You know, we talk a lot about. Uh, on this show, we talk a lot about character, evolution of, wrestling, evolution of. But we also talk about a support system when it comes to wrestling and becoming a wrestler. Because, man, I don't know it like you men and women know it. But we all know that it's not easy to persevere in the wrestling world. So a- that support system, could you talk to us, the fans, um, how vital a support system May it be your parents, your sister, your cousins, the men and women in the back giving you some guidance. Talk to us about a support system in wrestling. Sure. I mean, when when you look at a support system, no matter what line of work you're in, you do need that that closeness of your family or friends or relationships to help get you through anything, whether it's a trying time at a job or just a job that, you know, you're, you're doing the best you can because everything can be difficult. Uh, you know, this sport is no other, um, because there is no off season. Um, and, you know, because of that, you know, you're consistently battling, you know, minor and nagging injuries here and there. And, you know, when you're, when you're trying to make a name for yourself in wrestling, you know, it's kind of like the stories, the old timers in the business would say back in the day that if they, if they got hurt or injured and they couldn't work, they, they didn't get paid you know, here on a different scale, making a name for yourself these days, if you don't work or get injured and you're out of the picture, um, somebody else is going to take your spot. And when it's time for you to come back, you want to hope that people don't forget about you. So, you know, the support system needs to be there, I I think, in all areas, because like anything, um, as much as what we do is physical, it does play a toll mentally and emotionally on you. I think the the mental and emotional aspect of our business actually hurts a lot more than the physical aspect does in, in a lot of ways. So, you know, as, as much of a support system as, as you have, you know, when I look at, for me, you know, my family back in the day, when I told them I wanted to really pursue this, you know, they told me they had no problem with it. Uh, they just said, it, if you're going to still be living at home, and this was my early twenties, they said, you needed a college degree before we'll allow you. Cause if, if not, um, you know, you're going to have to start paying rent or, or uh, you're going to have to find a new place to live. And that wasn't anything other than showing me what it's like to be an adult um, and making adult decisions that will affect, you know, the rest of your life. Um, but, you know, as much as they were not necessarily fans, my sister uh, that I have and my parents were, uh, were very supportive, um, more so my mother than my father, um, not for anything on the fact that he was just concerned with me, you know, getting injured and, and things of that nature. But, you know, they, they supported me through and through. Um, you know, I went through two relationships um, in wrestling. I'm actually on my third, and I, I pray to God it is my final relationship because I think three times is the charm. Um, you know, but, but, if, but, you know, my early relationship when I got in wrestling was involved with someone that didn't like wrestling, um, thought it was um, beneath you know, life, it was thought it was very uh, white trash and, and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, that relationship didn't end well. And unfortunately, I did take some time off from wrestling due to, um, you know, insecurities and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, mind has a funny way of working when you when you care about someone and, uh, you know, they kind of lead you in the wrong direction, um, you know, because at times, you know, people want the attention and uh, 
I think at that time, very early on in my life, I don't think both of us in, in that world understood what compromise was. Um, you know, so that relationship didn't end well. And then in the second relationship, it was similar, um, you know, but uh, not necessarily the same. But, you know, I'm, I'm thankful now for, you know, being almost 20 years in and I feel like everything is starting to click. You know, I feel like the last three years of my my career have been the best. Um, you know, I've got a great support system with, you know, someone that uh, loves me and truly supports me and, and wants to see me do great things, not just in my in, the, in my goals and dreams, but, you know, other aspects of my life. So, you know, I think you need a support system in every aspect, not just in pro wrestling, but you need an aspect of, of um, uh, caring from that individual and all your individuals in every aspect of your life to help fuel everything you want to do. Uh, absolutely uh, so well put uh, sir because you know this part up here we talk about the whole package mm -hmm. it talk uh, it takes to make a wrestler mm -hmm. and it's not even just five things 10 things 15 things it's like a trillion point seven things mm -hmm. that it really takes to culminate to be a wrestler mm -hmm. you could have a great physique you could have a great look you could be beautiful you could do great in the ring. You could have great gear. You could have all sorts of things as a wrestler. But my friend, if you don't have this, it totally throws up, throws off everything of what you're trying to accomplish, obviously, in, in life, but as a wrestler specifically, because, dude, you've got to be so safe. You've got to be so conscious and focused, and you just got to be on your game at all times in that ring. Hundred percent. If you uh, if you look at the way the landscape of wrestling has been, you've seen over the course of 20, 30 years, how many guys have been larger than life in terms of size, but fizzled out very quickly because for some reason, not everybody grasps um, the concept of, of what our line of work really is. Um, it's all based on emotion and it's based on feeling. Um, you know, a lot of people like to say that if you don't grow up loving this, that you can't be great at it. Um, that is true to a degree, but I have seen many who have transferred over into this world that have done very well for themselves and have been able to grasp it and understand it. So I think there's a shift and change over the last 20 years where um, you can be an athlete in another line of work and cross over. Um, but all in all, you still have to understand um, mentally and emotionally, uh, what you're doing out there. And it's a feeling, um, you know, you, you can, um, put a match together A to Z, but if you don't feel it, and if the fans in attendance don't feel it, it's going to come across very flat. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I always preach to the young students that I, I help train over at the wrestle pro school is you have to react, don't act react to what is going on with your your opponent react to the fans and what they're saying you have to listen um and that's a huge part um and that's where you never stop learning different styles and you never stop learning uh how to do this because they're and it's like anything in life in any job you know you could have all the tools in the world but you go to a new job you're going to learn something new and a different way of doing right. things from someone else so yeah, you have to be very um, cognizant mentally and emotionally to be able to truly grasp and understand what, you know, our line of work entails. Uh, absolutely. And that's another thing. We talk about a lot of different things uh, uh, and, and about wrestling because wrestling to me as a fan absolutely fascinates me how uh, the sacrifices, the struggles, the, mm -hmm. the physicality, the traveling, the mental game, that everything that it takes, again, because it takes so much. But one of those main factors that you were just speaking of, the communication between us, I call it a little dance. I love the dance between wrestler, fan, fan, wrestler. That relationship is something like no other in any other sport. I don't care what it is, where you go. Wrestling and the fans have quite the relationship that is very unique. And my question being, developing your wrestling character and your persona and your career, because we've been talking a lot about the philosophy of wrestling. Mm -hmm. But again, this is kind of pertains to it. How long did it take you to develop 
that ear to hear us react like you're saying react right. with it um how long did it take you specifically to develop that tool I think for me consistently with the training and the live event experience that I had, it probably took me about six or seven years to truly feel comfortable to understand and how to listen to the crowd. I mean, you hear the crowd when you're in there, but you don't truly understand what's going on until you really start to develop yourself. And the reason why I say it takes a long time is because, you know, the first couple of years you're in, you're trying to do everything correctly uh, in the ring. You know, you're you're so worried about your footwork. You're so worried about your ring positioning. You're so worried about making everything that you do in there look 100% legitimate. Um, at the same token, you are mentally now trying to remember things that you put together if you did, you know, put something together uh, as a story. Uh, so I think for a number of years, you're so worried about those two areas that you forget to react to the crowd and you forget when you do that uh or when you don't do that the crowd will not buy in um you know but i think it takes a, a mixture of different things to put that uh to put that cake together so to speak those ingredients um and and i think that's a very hard thing that i still find in talent today that have been doing it even 10 years um they don't react to the crowd and that could be for a number of different reasons. They may not have been trained that way. They may have not been, you know, taught to look at things that way. Um, but you do have to listen to the crowd and you have to listen to how the crowd is reacting to you. Do they buy into you? Do they buy into your persona? Do they believe that what you are portraying to them is 100% genuine and is not something that is made up that isn't really you. Um, and that's where I think the fans will truly give you that response is as you grow your persona over time, uh, you may try some different things that may not necessarily pertain to your real personality. But I think once fans start understanding who you are as a personality in, in the real sense, they'll start seeing that genuine emotion come out in you. They will start believing the things that you say because it should be real. Uh, and I, I think that's where it took me about seven years to really start feeling comfortable to start listening to the audience and start listening to what uh, they were saying and how to get the audience involved in, in the match you're, you're developing. Now, I'd like to use uh, someone specific. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her. Nakoma Tala. Uh, she's, uh, <laughs> she's turned like we talk evolution. She went from the dark side if you will. Mm -hmm. She's found her spirit within. But when she did, she sat down and she goes, okay, who am I as a care, you know, as a person, how can I bring that to the table of wrestling mm -hmm. and use it to my character and develop that and make that connection even more because I'm not feeling what I'm doing right now for myself right. and the reaction from the crowd. Now I feel the spirit inside myself. Now she's become a beautiful, uh, uh, Indian Pocahontas, if you will, but it's kind of what was in her, you know what I'm saying? And she's kind of taken what she's like, what she <laughs> likes in life, amped it up a bunch, brought it to the table, and holy crap, man, she is running with it, and it's working very well for her. Yeah, it, it takes a long time, I think, to truly develop who you are. You know, some some that get involved in our line of work are still – afraid to show their real personality um you know and, and i always like to say you know you either have a personality or you don't um and if you don't you better find it because you know that's truly going to develop who you are but uh you know you also have to have a certain amount of charisma uh and aura but you know you you're going to start at the bare minimum to try and figure who you are by trying to grasp at straws to find different inspirations for a character that you want to be. And I think that's what happens a lot of times when you first get into wrestling, you want to be something that you're not. And that's kind of what wrestling is. You know, you get to go out on a larger scale and kind of portray something that you're not, but eventually over time, it has to become who you really are. 
uh, as I like to say, I think it took me being in wrestling for about 15 to 16 years to truly, truly figure out who I was because I had tried many different iterations of portraying a character that I thought, you know, had some personalities to me, but in reality, they weren't really who I was. So I, a lot of those early days, they, the characters fell flat on my face uh, until I finally changed my look a little bit and just really started digging deep about, you know, who I was and what I'm about and my past struggles in not just in, in the wrestling world, but in, in life. Mm-hmm. And I think that brought a lot out in me. And I think I started to change the way I looked at my in-ring style. And, you know, I, I figured out, you know, something that actually started working. And, uh, you know, when it starts working, when you start getting more bookings and you know, <laughs> start uh, making a lot more positive network connections, you stop um, associating with uh, the negatives uh, in our line of work. Because trust me, I think there's more negativity in our line of work and cutthroat selfish mm-hmm. than there is uh, on a positive side. So I think once I started changing a lot of those things, that that's where I started to see my persona grow. Mm-hmm. Now, again, we've been talking a lot about philosophy and such of wrestling because I know you are a trainer. Uh, could you talk to us about your character? Because I'm, I'm fascinated with Mr. Donovan because now you've talked about experimenting, getting up to this point where you're very comfortable within yourself, right. which you brought to the table now. Now, could you please tell us maybe on a couple characters on that you tried to come out of the come out of the gate with because some of those <laughs> you look back at your time some mm-hmm. of those might not be the best but sometimes we can laugh ha ha at some of them so like please tell us there was a character like when Kane started he was a Christmas tree creature or whatever the hell he had what <laughs> what did Mr. Donovan have going on in his early days you know I think for me starting out I you know I started as a very generic you know baby face, uh, you know, Mr. Ra Ra, let's, you know, okay. a lot of, you know, a lot of people uh, start and then there was an opportunity for me to kind of join the dark side, so to speak. And it was a, a new layer to figure out who I was. And, you know, at the time, this is 2002. So I started experimenting with what I think a lot of early wrestlers do a lot, which I still don't understand today. Uh, you know, you wear sunglasses to the ring, but you're indoors. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I had that. I was wearing the flashy, uh, I want to call it the rave shirts. Um, You know, just trying to really just figure out who I was. Um, You know, I experimented with uh, different looks, you know, where I really started to understand a little bit of it was, you know, I I had grown a beard and I was was trimming it and I made a mistake and I cut all the way into the beard. So I'm like, okay, I got to shave this whole thing off now. But I, I was shaving and I'm like, what if I leave some sideburns? Um, And then I just developed that into like mutton chops and I getting chance of like, you're not Elvis, you know, I, you know, and I kind of grew that a little bit years later. I started doing the, uh, the, the old Harley Ray, let me kill the, the handlebar mustache. So I just tried to experiment with different things and then uh, trying to reinvent myself. I, I kind of dipped into the characters that I always enjoyed studying and watching so i kind of went into like a combination of a jimmy garvin uh, rick root style character that became more of like a uh a, a stripper character you know i had a whole tease you know dance thing i i was in a tag team with someone and we developed that and that worked for you know a decent amount of time and then when i took some time off and i came back you know i tried going back into that persona again but it just it wasn't me you know, I realized that I evolved and just as a person going through different mm-hmm. life experiences, you know, I, I had a lot of um, animosity, a lot of resentment for being away. I had a lot of animosity and resentment for kind of giving up on myself. And, you know, I kind of really tapped into a real, uh, not a negative, but a very dark side of my personality um, in a character driven way that, you know, I use a lot of my beliefs um to this day and it kind of turned that into character i used a lot of doors that were slammed in my face a lot of opportunities that passed me by and uh i started really understanding that the business was evolving 
Um, and it wasn't that old school style wrestling that we talked about earlier that you and I grew up mm-hmm. on loving. Um, it was a more faster paced environment, um, a lot more acrobatics and things of that nature. And while it's not my cup of tea, I would sometimes joke around about it and it just started developing things in my mind. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to take this in a different direction. I'm going to, after, you know, 16 years of wearing long trunks, I decided to give wearing the, the short trunks a, a shot and uh, really started to see the real me come out in that. And I've evolved it over time to this character that is, you know, now it, it is someone that um, you don't see very often on an event. You don't really see a lot of guys working a very grizzled old school style. Um, and I think that helps me stand out a lot on shows where a lot of the guys are doing a lot of the acrobatics and, uh, you know, they, a lot of them, you don't see a lot of guys even wearing boots anymore. So, uh, on events. So I think it was a chance for me to completely reinvent myself as a guy that is trying to bring what I feel is, is wrestling back to the way it should be. Uh, and I think that's helped change my style. I've, I've taken some bits and pieces of other people in the entertainment world and have kind of really tried to figure out, you know, what this character is. And, and I've now evolved it into more of, uh, as my nickname as a Messiah is, is someone that is trying to preach that the business needs to come back to the way it needs to be. And if not, then those people that want to dabble in this crazy, uh, you know, acrobatic style are going to suffer for it so uh so that's kind of you know where my my characters book off and i've kind of come to where i am now and i'm still evolving it because we we all have to keep evolving um in order to stay relevant and fresh and i think that's what has helped me be around for almost 20 years i've been able to consistently uh, not only have good matches but reinvent my personality and my character each time and not be afraid to kind of speak the truth a little bit too in the right uh comfortable doing promos oh uh in in the last five years yes i i think midway through my career i was comfortable but because i was still unsure of those characters i don't think i was in the beginning like anybody you're starting uh now just you know i don't even have to really think about it i just need some bullet points and i can think of something in my head and i just turn the on and I, I just go. I think I've, with my character, I found my voice. Um, I don't need to scream and yell um, in promos. I, I kind of go the, the Jake Roberts route where I kind of, mm-hmm. I kind of draw you in and then I kind of hit you at the end. So uh, yeah, nice. I'm very comfortable on, on promos. Uh, those are some of the fun things I actually enjoy uh, working on at the school with the students is helping them find their voice early on where no one taught me that early on. I still kind of grew up in an era where uh, guys were afraid that if they taught you too much, you'd come for their spot. Um, I'm in a different place, different mindset. So, you know, let me give back to, you know, what wasn't given to me uh, early on. I, I find that a lot with some of the schools that are happening right now. Uh, love me some slick Wagner Brown mm-hmm. and the test of strength in East Hartford, Connecticut. Yep. Uh, he, teaches so many aspects all in that one little place and man do we have some fun on those shows that they have down there holy cow uh you said the word grizzled and Mm -hmm. when you said that word all that came to mind was yourself Mm -hmm. standing next to mr don dan moff with all of those shiny belts yeah because i i don't research i'm not that bright i just like to go off the cuff Right. Uh, but when I was on your page talking a little, I mean, following you a little bit, uh, I seen some of the pictures grizzled. <laughs> I don't even think that is the, I don't even know what the hell to use the word for you and Dan Moss. Mm-hmm. What is going on over there with that relationship you've got going on with that monster? I tell you what, man, I, I you know, I actually, when I was a fan before I got into the business, Danny Moff was just starting out in Jersey, all pro wrestling that. <laughs> I was running uh, at a place called Charity Hall in Bayonne. Uh, and that became like a mini arena hotbed. Like that was the place to be once a month, uh, you know. And, and Danny came up in, in a different class with guys, you know, being trained by some, if you want to call grizzled, guys like Homicide, 
um, low key, all those great strikers and, 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 you know, that whole area was just a, had a very new wave ECW type vibe. You got guys like amazing red in there that were, was a forefather for what's going on in the business now. So, you know, I, I grew up, a, a you know, a fan of, of his and, and homicide and, and, and Steve Max characters, um, because they were just so real. And they were brutal and people were legitimately scared to be within five, six feet of them. Um, but, you know, as much as uh, a lot of people don't understand um, the East Coast uh, of wrestling and the independence back in the day, Jersey All Pro was like the outlaws. And there were, you know, other independents that were around, but nobody really crossed over into those into that territory. So. For as almost as long as I've been around as as Moff, um, we never really crossed paths until I joined WrestlePro, and uh, we just kind of hit it off because our philosophies were uh, identical. Um, our loves of certain individuals that we grew up idolizing were very similar, um, and that just kind of started off, uh, you know, uh, a friendship. And uh, you know, there was a show that both of us were on, and there were some. Uh, no shows, and they need to rearrange the card, and they wanted to do a uh, uh, a tag match. Um, it was for uh, the Samoans, um, and you know, Danny said, "Hey, you know, I, my buddy's here. You know, we could switch the card around. Why don't we use the two of us?" And uh, you know, we we teamed together for for that night against uh, uh, Lance Ano Anawahi and uh, Alpha Junior. Um, you know, Samu and uh, you know Alpha's, you know. Uh, kids and uh had no idea that we were literally only just going to put a finish together and uh we we tore the roof off i think we went close to 25 minutes and uh just driving back we talked about it and and we said it was like we had been teaming for years we knew where to be we knew each other's strengths we knew what to do what not to do and i think him being in a tag team for so long early on in his career and myself the same thing uh, we just hit it off and we said, you know, what if we tried to give this a shot? And, uh, you know, we, we came up with a name and we were just us. Uh, we took our characters in a little bit of a different direction, uh, kind of off the wall a little bit. Uh, you know, I've added a little bit of uh, John Cronus to my persona a little bit, kind of whack, uh, which is great. But, you know, um, we, we had some really good things lined up and, you know, the opportunity came for Danny to... Uh, make an appearance back with Ring of Honor after, you know, 14 years. Um, and Danny, I knew, would do what he always does, and, and that's deliver. And because of that, you know, an opportunity was offered to him with an exclusive contract. And, you know, I couldn't be happier for him. You know, who knows where this could have gone? Who knows where it might be able to, you know, come back in the future? But, you know, he's got a totally different world he's got to immerse himself in now. Uh, obviously, once once everything goes back to normal and, and I have to continue on my journey. So uh, but what came out of that is a really awesome friendship that, uh, you know, is probably the uh, the closest thing I have to a, a brother. I've got some really good best friends, but for some reason, he and I, we just click on a different level. So it's awesome to have somebody who's a best friend, a brother, a mentor, you know, historian like I am to kind of just bounce ideas off each other on a daily basis. Now that relationship will last forever, and it all it all comes from wrestling, man. Wrestling does some funny stuff in our lives, you know. There's yes. lows, there's highs, but there's there's relationships and friendships that just I've made so many friends, just you know, fans and stuff, and we talk all the time. I do a thing like today at uh right after this actually at at twelve noon, I'm getting like six of the fans together. We all hang out and we talk favorite wrestlers. We talk favorite promotions. I have a guest, a uh, surprise guest coming in uh, that, you know, usually is a wrestler. And we get a little pop out of it. We have some fun. So, I mean, I'm, we make some, a lot of friendships out there in wrestling. Yes, we can. I can say that, uh, you know, they always say in life you can count your, your closest friends on less than one hand. Okay. Um, for me, I have three uh, you know, I, I'd say four really close friends, um, but three of them are like my true brothers and they're all from the wrestling business. You know, the other two I have known for the better part of, uh, 
15 years at this point now, and we're still very, very close. So okay. sometimes the, the business is what is what draws your real life relationships into, not just, mm. you know, from a, a uh, friendship standpoint. Uh, there are many that I've talked to that have met their longtime, you know, girlfriends and, and spouses um, through the business. So you never know where life is going to take you. The way you talk about wrestling, you're evidently still to this day a very avid fan because you have a, a passion that is very, again, evident. Um, we're talking friendships and stuff. Mm -hmm. The way we connected was through one Jose Perez. Yes, we I did. Would, I would like you to talk to us, the fans, mm -hmm. how that relationship is, how it became and because he's done some flaming chop shit that scares the crap out of me. Uh, oh. <laughs> talk you to know, us, the fans, about yeah. your relationship. You know, I first got to know Jose's name uh, many, many years ago when I first started working for Chaotic Wrestling out in New England. Um, you know, I had heard the name but never met him. Um, after I took that little hiatus and came back, it took me a little bit of time, but I found a way to make my way back to the... Uh, you know, New England area, and uh, I got connected with uh, XWA uh, out in Rhode Island, uh, and that was where I first met uh, Jose. So I was finally able to put a face to the name and, you know, really developed, uh, you know, a fun relationship uh, with Jose. Um, you know, uh, I think Jose is a very genuine individual, still has a passion for the sport, uh, even though he is not in the ring uh, very much anymore. <clears throat> um, but he is a hilarious personality. Um, he's a guy that loves to continue giving back and teaching and help making events bigger. Um, got to know him a little bit more when uh, JT Dunn started the What Wrestling promotion out in uh, uh, Rhode Island as well. And got to, you know, he, he was helping film some things and really got to uh, see his creativity on, on a filming side as well. Um, but, you know, when even when you don't know those in the business as well, um, I guess the phrase that would come to mind is real recognizes real. Uh, and Jose is a, is a real individual. Um, you know, he's a, a brother in our line of work, uh, you know, and I would do anything to, uh, you know, to help the good people, uh, you know, in the sport. Uh, I did have the opportunity to kind of run a small angle with him and then uh, be involved in a uh, battle royal with him. And I will undoubtedly say, as much as I thought Danny Moff's chops were going to take my breath away, I think in, in my career, Jose has the hardest chops in the world. Uh, in battle royal, he came right for me and lit me up. And to a point where I never cover up on a chop, and I literally tried to run away, and he pulled me right back. Uh, uh, but you know, and we, you know, we have a good laugh about it afterwards, but I don't think anyone has made my chest bleed, uh, as, as much as Jose's has. So, uh, but Jose's a real good brother and I appreciate him connecting me we, with me to you, uh, giving me a chance to, you know, tell my story a little bit. Um, but I love, I love some, some Jose any, any time I get a chance to see him. Man, I have to say the same exact thing. I love me some Jose. Holy cow. Everything you said, too, very, very factual. Giving back to wrestling itself, Jose loves that. Mm -hmm. um, he just, that passion, my friend, is unbelievable with Jose. And, man, what a sense of humor that guy has. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> you speak of the chops. I saw him <clears throat> light the crap out of Two Buff one time. And Two Buff... I think he has maybe a pound or two more than I do. And holy cow, that poor kid. Yeah. I will not, I've never seen anybody so physically abused in my life watching Jose take that boy out. Holy crap. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a genuine, uh, a genuine individual. And, uh, you know, like I, said, I, I'm very blessed to be able to cross paths with a lot of really genuine individuals in our line of work. That's made me, you know, not not just a uh, a better performer, but just you know an overall better person uh, in our business. Did we freeze or something? I'm oh, okay. Old. Okay. Sometimes Skype is a little weird. It kind of catches me off guard, and I'd be like, "Oh shit, did it freeze?" Oh, oh, wait. so. <laughs> uh, but no, I'd like to talk about you're actively wrestling still. You've been in the game for about twenty years. You said. 
almost. What yes. are some What are some of the promotions that you frequent when you go out and perform? And I know we're at a, a funny time, right? But because I like the fans to get to know, obviously that don't know you. We want to get to know you, but we also like to hear about new promotions and maybe look them up on face page and Twitter and all of that stuff. So throw us a couple of those promotions that you get to frequent that you like to work at, but make sure don't give us the three little uh, letter things because we don't know all of the names. No. So yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously the, the main home company that I work for is wrestle pro. Um, you know, they're based out of uh, New Jersey, um, you know, uh, owned and operated by, uh, by Pat Buck uh, and uh, Kevin, Kevin Matthews is a, is a huge behind the scenes individual there. Um, you know, along the East coast area, I, to be very honest with you, I've tried to break away from the East Coast area over the last uh, couple of years just because I've kind of done everything here and I, I want to expand into, into uh, you know, other states and, <clears throat> you know, other areas. But, uh, you know, some places that I also work along that line is a place called uh, Pro Wrestling Magic, which is located in northern uh, New Jersey. Uh, every now and then, it's been a while, and I, when wrestling comes back, I'd like to make my way back down to Danny Cage's Monster Factory. Uh, another great place that's there, uh, you know, in New England, I have an you know, area I've worked for, uh, like I mentioned, uh, XWA, Extreme Wrestling Association with, uh, you know, Jose and the crew that that's over there. Um, uh, where else have I been? You know, I've been, you know, to, uh, you know, Chaotic Wrestling is a, is a big hotbed in Massachusetts. I would love to uh, return there sometime soon, um, you know, but I also have done some other work with a promotion in North Carolina called AML. Um, uh, to be very honest, there is no real name for it. Um, but it's, if you look up AML, they're there. Um, a great group of guys with, uh, Brian Hawks and Tracy Myers, uh, running a real old school promotion out there and, and training young students out there. Uh, and then in Florida, I also work for two companies. Uh, one is a longtime company that used to be in New York, um, but moved to Florida run by a gentleman by the name of Frank Goodman, um, called USA Pro. Um, I think USA Pro is probably the longest running independent company right now. Um, really? I was uh, originally there was the original ECWA um, in Delaware that was run by a gentleman named Jim Kettner. Uh, but he uh, he closed up shop a number of years ago and sold the name off to a number of group that was running it that is running it now. So for me, I don't consider it the, the original. It's 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 a newer brand. Um, so I think uh, Frank is running the, the is the longest uh, running into independent promoter that's out there uh, and also a new pop up company in Florida called Blueprint Wrestling, which I've worked for as a place I'd love to, uh, you know, come back to. Um, so, you know, and always expanding my horizons and trying to um, tackle some, you know, new places, you know, before all this started happening, I was starting to make some connections with a couple of places in Detroit. Uh, a place in Colorado, a place in um, uh, Minnesota as well. So, uh, you know, we'll see where, uh, where that lands when uh, everything goes back to normal. Now, you mentioned a couple down in Florida. Another one that's come out of, uh, come up is Gang Girls Wrestling Asylum. I don't know if you're yes. aware of that. Uh, yes, I... Man, that looks like a lot of fun down there. And they got a lot of cool men and women that, are coming up as students through this place and i'm i love seeing that you know no I, and uh you know uh, um forgive me uh gentleman with mlw came from uh, mm -hmm. uh court Denver. power court, court power yeah and uh but also um uh they're they're uh champion forgive me it's very early in the morning and i've hadn't had my uh uh coffee yet um but the okay. uh you know, the, the the samoan werewolf um mm -hmm. you know in, jacob jacob, fatu. jacob fatu. yes thank you i apologize and if, if you hear <laughs> probably give me some shit for it but um but yeah uh, he came from gangrel school and uh you know i've gotten to know gangrel a few times in some locker rooms i've shared with him and i really picked his brain a lot uh you know and have inquired about maybe you know coming down to his promotion when he runs events at some point uh, i was originally scheduled to actually work with gangrel uh at a show in alaska for wrestle pro that uh, unfortunately he had to pull off due to some other, uh, you know, commitments. And then obviously this whole virus mm -hmm. thing happened with our world. So, you know, my hope is that I get a chance to work with him at some point, cause he's definitely been someone on my bucket list of, you know, someone who's been around for such a long time that is still in amazing ring shape and is 
not that typical legend that just wants to come in and, and do a couple things and leave. Uh, you know, Gangrel is a guy that wants to get in the ring and wants to go. And I love being able to uh, do things with uh, guys of that nature. And, and not only that, sir, you talk about his shape right now and all of that, but he likes to uh, spend his time behind the merch table, hanging mm -hmm. out, talking with the fans, yep. talking to you yep. men and women, giving you that advice. He likes to spend the time mm -hmm. giving back to the community of wrestling, you know? Yeah, he does. Uh -huh. And he, uh, there's a lot of guys that, you know, are, are like, and I think, you know, I think uh, young guys in the business need to be a little bit more proactive when, when you have gentlemen like that in your locker room. Um, I know it can be intimidating sometimes, but just go up to them, you know, yeah. Hey, can I, can I pick your brain? Can I ask you a question? You never know where it's going to go. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate in the last couple of years to be around guys like the rock and roll express and Manny Fernandez and, and Shane Douglas and Jake Roberts and, to just be able to sit there and have a conversation and watch where it goes. And all of a sudden it just becomes like a sermon and the whole locker room just listens in. Um, that's where I get a lot of my knowledge and a lot of my experience and my philosophies from that I can now uh, pass along to the younger talent now that don't get a chance to be around some of these guys. Uh, and, and I'll use uh, my personal experience real quick before we get into the you as a trainer. Mm -hmm. I, I was at a, a show, Battlefront Pro in uh, Ludlow, Mass, and Gangrel was on the show. He was in the main event, but he was out uh, pre-show. And myself, I take my phone and I go up to the men and women and I ask them to do quick little promos. We have a bunch of fun and, you know, mm -hmm. I kind of have a goofy ass shtick, you know, Dr. K, blah, blah, blah. And I get in your face and I, put, you know, put it on. But I went up to Gangrel. Again, you never know who's going to say yes. You never know who's going to say no. So you just got to ask. You know, that's the whole point of this. I went up and I asked him. I go, hey, do you mind? He's like, oh, we got a lot of stuff going on. Maybe a little bit later, I would be more than happy to. But I went up to him and I asked him. And you can't be scared to ask because you never know what you're going to get out of it. Correct. You never know. I mean, I asked Jake Roberts in the locker room one time. I just had a question about his promos. And next thing I know, he's sitting with me for 45 minutes giving me a lecture. Out promos but because of that uh that's helped me now in the last couple of years really change my style of my my promo so you never know what you're going to get unless you ask I, I agree with you uh now i'd like to dive into because i got to, i got such a busy day ahead of me i don't know why i do this crap to myself uh i'd like to dive into because of the way you talk again it's not only that you are evidently a fan of wrestling you have a passion for it Mm -hmm. But you now are uh, training the, the men and women that are want to be wrestlers, that mm -hmm. are upcoming, mm -hmm. or even if they're not even brand new, that are taking uh, more of an, a knowledge experience with WrestlePro. I would love to hear about what you're doing at WrestlePro, what your position is, um, mm -hmm. and, and kind of give us a journey uh, on that one. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I st when my uh, original place that I, I came from, which was Independent Wrestling Federation, where I was trained from. Uh, my original trainer closed up his school back in 2012 and then decided to reopen the school in a different location in 2014. Uh, asked me to come back and help train students. Um, and, uh, you know, that was kind of like uh, an entry point for me to come back and uh, really started developing my philosophy with that based on how I was trained. And I really started to develop a love for passing along a lot of that knowledge and then watching the students kind of get it, um, so to speak, and watch them spread their wings. So uh, years later, coming to, you know, WrestlePro and, and you being someone that's been around for a while and has a lot of um, understanding of the fundamentals and, and the basics uh, and really showing that my love for that and helping out and giving back, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, always helping at the school a lot, you know, when Pat Buck would be there training with the students. Uh, and, uh, you know, when he uh, got the opportunity to go work for WWE in a producer role, um, he had to step back from the school a little bit uh, and ask, you know, myself and another um, gentleman that is at that school, Bobby Wayward, uh, along with uh, Danny Moff, who, you know, uh, is in the area too, for us to kind of, you know, take the reins of the school. Uh, and that really became a lot of fun for me because we have a good group of 
not just brand new students, but, uh, you know, intermediate students that have been Mm -hmm. wrestling for a couple of years and and being able to show them um, some different techniques and different styles, um, but also to kind of dig in their, excuse my phrase, dig in their ass a little bit, um, Mm -hmm. really push them in a way of finding out who they are, finding out their passion for this and really being able to pick their brain and kind of get into them a little bit. And that's been a lot of fun seeing the new guys learn, you know, the basics, but also seeing some of the intermediate guys kind of dig in a little bit more with that personality and that intensity and that aggression that you need uh, and being able to see it come out in, in the live event matches. So, uh, you know, everyone's training style is going to be different. Um, you know, you all have, we all have to learn the foundation, but the biggest thing I am a stickler for, um, not just footwork in the ring, but I'm a stickler for that realism, that intensity, that aggression, bringing some of that logic, uh, into doing what you're doing and then being able to talk to you about it after and say, why did you do it that way? What if you do it this way? What if we go this direction and, and being able to have an open dialogue with the students, um, you know trying to help them figure out their ways and who they are has been a lot of fun for me. I've, I, I, I know a few of the men and women coming out of there. And if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong, because again, I'm not that bright, Mr. Donovan. And I lose a lot of data. Uh, uh, TJ Crawford. Mm-hmm. You're familiar with one TJ Crawford. Am, am I correct on saying that? Oh yeah. I, I when I came to wrestle pro TJ, had only started training at Russell Pro, I think maybe five or six months earlier. Um, so I've been able to see TJ's growth, uh, you know, over the last, you know, four years. And, uh, you know, that kid is, is something special. He gets himself because it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, doing the drives, you mm-hmm. know, making the networking and all of that good stuff for wrestling. But then me as a fan, I see him on Impact Wrestling. I lost mm. my absolute crap. Holy cow. Uh, as a trainer, mm. it's got to make you feel, you know, a little bit of pride going on. And I know we all have a little piece, you know, like when you went, like you said, uh, so, some aren't just brand new students. Some are intermediate and what have you and already have some under their belt. And right. it's got to be a little bit of pride, though, when you get to see TJ Crawford on TV, no? Yeah, it's a pride from a peer perspective, more so for me, because I was not necessarily as heavily involved in his development and training because Pat was still the one at our school. Um, But I've had some good conversations with TJ. I've worked in the ring with him and and training and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, being able to just provide my insight on how I would do some of the things that he does and maybe just put him in different places. Um, I've seen where he's taken a few of those pieces and and moved them into there. but, you know, just from a passionate standpoint, because I can tell um, he's someone that that uh, reminds me of me very early on where I didn't miss a training practice. I was willing to go to any and every show that I wasn't booked on to try and find a way on to those shows uh, doing all the drives that needs to be done. Um, you know, I see a lot of myself, you know, in, in TJ and, you know, his career is going to skyrocket eventually. Uh, it's not a matter of, uh, you know, if it's a matter of when. So, uh, you know, I would love to mix it up with TJ in the ring more on live events and see where it goes with our contrast of styles. And um, but he's he's a great kid. And, uh, you know, I want nothing but the best for anybody in the business as much as I want it for the, the men and women coming from WrestlePro. No, a- absolutely. It, that's not to slight anybody. Uh, mm-hmm. But I had him on the show. I love me some TJ Crawford. Uh, so, and I knew that you would probably had a little kind of relationship with him with the whole WrestlePro thing. That's why I brought him up specifically. Mm-hmm. Now, back to Mr. Donovan. Mm-hmm. Are you looking to maybe get on that bigger stage? Because, you know, we were talking, uh, Mr. Moff is, you know, he, he has that ROH thing going on. Mm-hmm. Right now, mm-hmm. he's the current uh, Northeast Wrestling Champion. Mm-hmm. With these big things going on. I mean, the, the sky's the limit. Are, mm-hmm. are, is Mr. Donovan looking to get to that bigger stage in, in his wrestling career, or is he comfortable on the independent scene? Because some are, some aren't. So I'm curious where you're at on that. 
No, of course. I think anyone who gets involved in our line of work, if you don't aspire to make it to a bigger platform, then I don't know why you're doing it. <laughs> um, so, of course, I, I always would love to really kind of put the cap on my career of being able to, you know, um, be with a larger organization. Um, I think it will happen. Um, I just don't think uh, the stars have aligned yet is the phrase I like to use. Um, and I'm just going to continue to network and making connections. And until that opportunity presents itself, I'm just going to continue to do what I've always done. Uh, and that's grind on the independence and just work very hard and, uh, you know, see where that goes. And, you know, obviously if an opportunity comes for me to down the line to when my career is over in the ring to, train students, you know, full time. It's another way for me to still be connected in the world of uh, pro wrestling. But, you know, again, my, my goal is eventually to get to that bigger platform when the opportunity presents itself. Uh, something that I always love to gauge with uh, wrestlers, because I'm a fan, I watch wrestling. Uh, <laughs> you as a wrestler been in the game for 20, about 20 years. You're training the men and women. You actively wrestle. Do you find yourself still a fan turning on the TV and watching current product, WWE and such? Absolutely, yeah. You have to take the the wrestling character out of it when you watch it. I mean, it's hard to do um, because you might say, oh, why did he do that? Why did she do this? <laughs> I like to just sometimes just sit and enjoy the product and watch it for what it is. Um, we all are going to have our own philosophies on what we think should happen or should be going on. But at the end of the day, we can't control that because we don't work there. So I think sometimes you just have to sit back and still remember that the reason why you got into this is because you are a fan uh, and you should be able to sit down and, and enjoy it. You know, for example, when I, uh, you know, when I see my, my buddy Danny and I hear that he's going to wrestle somebody that I, I think is an awesome performer, I can't wait to watch that match and just watch it as a fan. You know, I actually, a couple of uh, months ago, I actually took a ride uh, with, you know, to the, uh, one of the Ring of Honor tapings and uh, saw that on that, on that night, uh, Danny was teaming with, um, uh, forgive me, uh, I'm having one of those, those moments this morning. That's okay. uh, the, the, the big uh, Hawaiian dude from Ring of Honor. Oh uh, God, I, wow. my brain. I haven't been able to keep up with a lot of wrestling because I've been doing three interviews a night, right. five on the weekends. I haven't watched crap for wrestling. So right now, mm -hmm. this kid is very lost. You're asking the wrong guy. Right. <laughs> well, and again, forgive me uh, that I'm, I'm forgetting his name. I really shouldn't with the knowledge that I have. It's just uh, it's one of those mornings. But, uh, you know, I got to watch him and his partner work uh, lethal and uh, Jonathan Gresham in a contrast of styles. And as a fan, I'm like, this is going to be entertaining. And I was able to just sit back and watch that match as a fan. And, and I was blown away by what those four men put together. Um, so you have to be able to sit back and watch as a fan. If you can't, um, you have to keep up on everything that's current or relevant. If you don't, um, you're going to be behind the eight eventually because you never, uh, you're going to be in front of someone that is in a position of power and they might ask you what you know. And if you don't know who these individuals are, not going to be good for you. Yeah. Uh, as we're as you were speaking, Roosh, is that who he teamed up with? Roosh? Big, no, big no, he's the big uh, man. He just yeah. did with AEW. Um, oh, 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 Jeff Cobb. Thank you. Yes, yes. And his name was coming to me. I saw Jeff. In <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> You know, this whole virus thing, we're all indoors. I can't remember what day it is. I barely I have know. to up in the morning, so it's uh, it's a little much. Uh, I'll, I'll knock myself in the head for forgetting Jeff's name. Um, I know me too because I love Jeff. <laughs> but, yes, yeah, so, again, you, you have to be able to sit back and still be able to objectively watch it as a fan and yeah. just character go away for, you know, the time you're watching it. I don't know how you differentiate because – it's got to be a little bit difficult, but man, I loved talking to you about, uh, and I know 
we probably didn't even dive into many, many things because we talked a lot of philosophy, which I knew I was going to do with you, sir, because your brain, I wanted to pick your brain so bad about wrestling uh, I because I knew you had a lot of wisdom and knowledge to give us the fans, not only, you know, because you teach the men and women that are upcoming and such, but us, the fans, we love to learn about this kind of stuff. And I thank you so much for opening up and sharing that knowledge with us. No, I appreciate it very much. And as much as there is more to talk about, we can always revisit this on another other day. Um, but yes. no, I, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, dig into my brain a little bit. Uh, I love to talk about it. I love to share my philosophies and my experiences. And, you know, if anyone watches this, gets something out of it, you know, um, that that's a, a pleasure for me. Awesome, man. What a great what a great message. And you're I thought you were going to be a little rough around the edges because looking at those pictures with you and Mr. Moff, I'm like, oh, shit, what am I getting myself into? But you were an absolute pleasure, sir. Excellent, man. What a great time. This, Stir in a Pot with Don Kincaid and my very special guest, Sean Donovan, starting off this fine Saturday. Thank you so much, Sean. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Ready?